I want to show you all some of the recovery tools that I have been using. Almost forgot. I almost forgot. Always forgetting to put this in the actual coffee maker rather in here. But I think my parents are making coffee, so I think I'm just gonna have to go with a normal cup of coffee and go pour me a nice glass of coffee. So how is everybody doing today? As I have somewhat of a special vlog today. But we'll see where it kind of takes us. But I gotta go get the other coffee. I was right, everybody. Thank you, mom and dad, for making this nice, good, delicious cup of coffee because I don't feel like making a cup of coffee and I do not like the Keurig community caffeine coffee and Death Wish is just too hard to make right now. I'm gonna take a little bit of a 400 milligram caffeine break if you know what I mean. And I didn't have caffeine for the past two weeks because I had a school test to take two weeks ago and then last week. I was being smart with taking off because of some hip pain, but I feel good today. This right here, what they told me on PT on Thursday has been helping so much, I feel like. And just overall rolling out my foot. Not doing that prior to 17 weeks. I feel like I could have been started running a longer time ago, but who really knows? I mean, everything does happen for a reason. But speaking of today's run, this is actually the fourth run in a row. Four days, four runs, and I actually feel pretty good. Wednesday, I decided to like, oh, I'm just gonna try it. And I was having fun. So I set a time goal. I'm like, I'm gonna do 30 minutes. And I did 30 minutes on Thursday. Friday, I woke up with a little bit of pain, a little bit of tingless, tenderness, and some tightness along the foot and into the heel. But I'm like, I'm gonna do it. Pain, first five minutes, and it completely went away. I mean, completely went away. And throughout the day, not really any pain or flare ups, just a lot of tightness going on. And then today, I didn't wake up with any pain, a little stiffness, but nothing too serious. And after the stiffness kind of went away after rolling it with what I'm doing right now, now with the ice I ran and there wasn't pain there was a little bit discomfort strictly in the heel bone and while I was filming my run as y'all saw in the beginning of the video I did notice I'm leaning more to the left side as the last time I filmed my running was during my marathon training block where I say I had a pretty good decent solid running form I mean I'm not trying to glow here but I feel like my running form was pretty top tier and it was pretty good and since then it's decreased it declined a little bit because i haven't been running in 18 weeks so getting back to running my hips have to get stronger and start learning how to use my core muscles again with activating my glute muscles while still using the core and making sure to like go off my achilles and calves and not like i don't know i just noticed i have pretty weak hips and i have to strengthen those hips but as soon as i start running my form is all messed up and the only way to do that is strengthen it and keep on running because if you keep on running you're gonna end up fixing your form and doing drills like warm-ups like what i've been doing for my whole entire marathon training block is a 20 and 30 minute warm-up i don't have to do a warm-up that long but just a 10 minute warm-up of those dynamic stretches and drills will really help and also going to the gym and doing like squats deadlifts lunges and all of that because it will help tremendously i feel like because i know my running form kind of went to crap and i'm leaning more to the left side which the left side is where I'm having the pain at in the bottom of my foot and along the plantar fasciitis and heel bone. 
So that is one reason I could be having way more pain than other times. But I don't know if it's the true reason. So I guess I will find out and see. But maybe it was just due to something else. But I think that my running form changed over time. Now I'm leaning more over to the left side. It's weird. I'm not leaning more over to the right side so I can decrease pain off my left heel. But I'm actually leaning more to the left side. If I can even that out when I'm just running like straight, I, I think it will actually not cause as much pain because I'm literally leaning more more to this side rather than to the right side. It's weird. You would think I'd be leaning more to the right side because of the pain, but nope, 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 nope. But yeah, I mean, it was overall a pretty successful run. We got a bike ride today, which I haven't done a long ride in over two weeks. This is going to be my third week. I will have to get started pretty soon because I have a route. I don't know how long it's going to take me, say around three, three and a half hours. Who really knows though? If it's less, good. And if it's more, also good. So I have to get started early on that because I have to go to church for Easter Sunday because I won't be able to go to church on Easter Sunday because I'm going to a crawfish wall. We will have a vlog out for you on that. But yeah, I got to get some a little bit of work done. And then I'll hop on the bike. But before, I do want to show you some of my recovery tools that I have used to kind of help me out with the sport. I mean, I mean, not the sport. Kind of with my mobility routine recovery. So we'll talk about that later. Now, everybody, before I start riding my bike, I want to show you all some of the recovery tools that I have been using to kind of rehab my foot that I should have been doing a long time ago. I was a little bit lazy where I would go like one week on, maybe a few days on, a few days off, and then I would go back on. But for the past now two weeks, well, kind of ever since I went to PT, I've been really rehabbing my foot. And the last time I was able to kind of somewhat run, I don't know, it was kind of, I don't know, sloppy running, I don't know, if you can call call it that but was around the time I went to New Orleans for Mardi Gras it was the last time I was able to kind of run and that's the last time I was really recovering my foot I would foam roll especially my calves and I would stretch more especially my planner and I would overall just do way more recovery and then I took a break for whatever reason I have no clue why and I went to PT and a week later from that I've been really recovering my foot which happens to be the past two weeks especially this week well kind of last week I mean I did like nine and a half hours of yoga, which means I did nine and a half hours of recovery. And so it kind of just goes hand in hand of why my foot kind of feels better. Should have been doing it a long time ago, but I don't truly know if this would have made my foot feel better. I just say it could have, but who really knows? Only time will tell. And if this doesn't end up working out, I could have ramped up my miles too fast, or it's just too much too soon, which is also ramping up my miles too fast, or it's just, it just continues to flare up no matter what I do. It could have been a flare up from work. Nutrition wasn't correct. And by the way, speaking of nutrition, I need to buy more collagen powder. Not more collagen. I need to buy collagen powder. Uh, probably from BP. And like I said before, I just need to buy it because they really strengthen your tendons. And tendons suck. Well, not really. They support your whole entire body. Well, actually, that's your bones. But you know what I mean. So, your tendons do great things, but when they're flared up, they're a pain in the butt to heal because you do not have blood circulation going on. Your tendons are not going to heal because what requires tendons to heal is your blood. And the farther away your tendon is from a blood circulatory system area, I don't know. Don't know all the scientific information, but the further it is away from getting blood flow, the longer it's going to take recovery. And since my tendon is at the bottom of my foot, it's not going to get as much blood flow as if i had like i don't know some tendonitis in my shoulder or something around there that typically will heal so much more faster than something like the bottom of your foot especially the achilles tendon i mean that's also at the bottom of your foot even knee tendonitis is going to take a long time to heal i was lucky enough to win i had quadricep tendonitis it only took five weeks to fully heal and i didn't take five weeks completely off i was able to do run and walk and i did take two and a half weeks fully off then i was able to get into running walks could never bike but i was able to strength train i got obsessed with core literally do like core like all day is so odd but yeah i was lucky enough for that to heal and even all the previous plantar fasciitis flare ups that i had before was lucky enough it only lasted more than a week and i was still able to run on it this has lasted way too long and i have not been the way i should have of recovering it the way i need to okay everybody i'm just gonna show y'all this real quick because my water bottle is peeing as i see a little bit 
bit of a tiny hole. I must have been rolling it for so long that it ended up breaking a hole because of the water bottle being so frozen. So I learned about this method before and I did not say it. I'm like, I just assumed that it's not gonna work because nothing worked. And so I never took re good recovery into hands. But as soon as I went to PT, they found what the root cause was. I'm like, I really need to take care of this. And then the last time I went to PT, which was on Thursday, they did mention about the water bottle. I'm like, since they said it, I am going to do it. But when other people say it, I just don't listen. I don't know why I'm like that, but I feel like it's just not gonna work. But when they told me that, I started using the frozen water bottle. I mean, they had a frozen ball, I guess lacrosse ball in the shape of a football. And this football had points at the end of, I don't know, the, I don't know, the foam or whatever. And it would literally dig into your foot while being frozen solid. And it would feel way better than a water bottle like this because a water bottle is not like, it can't roll as good as you want it to and dig into your foot. But again, still really, really does work. And what is behind me are these cups. Now, these cups, I got these two years ago for Easter, which literally it's been two years now since I got these cups. And they really been helpful throughout uh, my recovery process. And I was using them back during the time in New Orleans and all the other times I run. But as soon as I went to PT, started cupping more. And it's not just my planner I'm cupping, I'm cupping my tight cast and moving it around and maneuvering it and just literally cupping the calf muscle, which I'm going to have to show y'all what I kind of do. Okay, so let me get onto this chair so I don't have to move my tripod even further down. Okay, so right here is where the foot is flared up. So when I went to PT on Thursday, it was about right here where she said, let me pull this camera up closer so y'all can get a better look at it. So right here was, as you can tell, I've been literally doing that water bottle for like an hour because my feet are starting to wrinkle just a tad bit so about right here is where the pain is kind of originating as when i bend my toe back i can literally feel pressure as it has created a massive knot into the bottom of my foot and it creates small little knots along the planter right here and so going into the heel bone it goes into about right here and just kind of like inflames this whole entire heel bone especially about right here into the heel bone so what i have been doing at PT and since I learned it at PT, I also do it at home, but I will put on some lotion, which I am not going to do that right now, but I will literally cup this bottom of my foot and leave it on and edit some YouTube or go on my phone or something, just leave it on. Or sometimes I would bend my foot back and it typically does not fall off, but today it wants to fall off, but I would literally go like this and I would just bend my foot back and just keep pumping it and just do that. And once I did that, I would put other cups along here and just or just kind of like rub it while this cup is on not on the planter but just around it because having the planter so crunchy it makes the whole entire foot all tight and tender and very stiff and sore but using this big toe which they also showed me just taking a towel and bending this or bending your toe your front toe all the way back and just literally massaging out around the tendon but also strictly on the tendon which i do get nervous about because it's just weird to do that because it's literally when you do that you can see your whole entire tendon sticking out and it just does that but i did realize you have one big tissue in your planner that literally runs from your big toe to your heel bone but from your heel bone you also have literally the planter tendon running throughout your whole entire foot from toe to heel bone and it ends up going into your achilles tendonitis and it connects your whole entire body and that's why i have tight calves especially about right here and so what i have been doing to do that is i have been cupping my achilles tendon once i cup that i kind of just maneuver my foot around and i go right here and sometimes i put three to even four cups around also since i say it's a connective tissue i will also put my cups on my knee and kind of just flex my knee just a tad bit not too much not too heavy just to get the tendons all loose because again it is a connective tissue that runs throughout the whole entire body i know tendons are all separate but it still correlates with one another and i also take some lotion which i'm actually gonna get on right now and i'll rub it along my calf as you see and then i'll take the cup and i'll just maneuver it down into my cast as I'm gonna have to loosen this because it's not budging. As it is so much easier to actually do it when someone else is doing it 
because you can't get the full range of motion that you like because they can go on the outer part of the calf, the mid part, and just everywhere. And if it gets painful, they'll still make you do it. I mean, when it gets painful to you and you're the one doing it, you're typically gonna stop because it just hurts way too bad. But along right here is where it's tender. But as I get up to the higher part of calf, almost coming right in the area of the meniscus which i had some pain in my marathon training block it's really tight about right here and when i did calf raises on wednesday which was three days ago i had very sore calves on thursday and friday and one reason is because i haven't done calf raises in a very long time so it just shows me i need to strengthen my calves a lot uh, not just doing calf raises but doing a lot more mobility and just kind of maneuvering my my ankle and foot around just flat Flexing it just like the tenon crunching my toes like so and just kind of do that as I go in the hot tub and I do all of this stuff where I will massage out the tendon like so and crunch my toes kind of just like relax and sleep in there but as you can see it is getting really red which shows that the blood flow is really creating and it will start to possibly create some type of bruise as if you leave a cup on for a little too long you're gonna get a bruise and it's not a bad thing i mean it's just showing that it takes trauma to heal an injury when i did the calf raises my calves got sore and so the tissues were a little bit broken down but allow me to get into the tissues and cup and foam roll it out a little bit more so they can get so much looser and I actually think that actually did help because that physical therapy they do scrape me especially around the calves and it creates trauma so it can relieve pressure off of another area and actually rehab the area that they did cup so let's say they cupped along this it creates stress right here but it will cause and release pressure off from here and especially in the Achilles so you don't have as much tightness and what I do know is when they do cup my left foot my right foot feels so much more stiff so yeah it is literally creating just a bit of a problem because i'm just strictly kind of recovering my left foot so it could end up flaring up my right foot without me even sooner realizing so as i'm cupping my left foot i really need to start also taking care of my right foot because plantar fasciitis cannot just occur in the foot that i always have it can also end up occurring in my right foot and that would really suck to have it in both feet so i do not just need to take care of my left side I do really need to take care of my right side so i've only been truly focusing on my left side which really does suck but yeah that is some of the things and as you see in the background that little red thing is what i stand on for balance about i don't know two months ago and i stopped using it i don't know why i just did and it did help strengthen the bottom of my feet which was key but i didn't think it helped enough rather the stuff that i'm doing right now really does help and then i would use the foam roller as i would foam roll out my calves now this is a little bit more on a technical type of stuff that i do not like doing because because it's just, I don't know, I can't dig into the calf muscle. I can actually dig into the calf muscle, but it becomes so uncomfortable just moving back and then I have to readjust every like minute. And it, I do it because it does help, but I don't do it that much like I should. And I will start to use the massage gun a little bit more, which I haven't used in a little bit, but I hopefully will start to be able to use the massage gun. So yeah, those are some of the recovery routines that I use. And I am going to stop this so I can go get you the question in the comment of the day so i can close out this vlog and go start my bike ride so everybody i hope you all did enjoy that little bit of a description that i did do i mean it wasn't that serious but it's just the some of the stuff that i actually have been using for recovery and i feel like it has been very beneficial not every day do i do it but i'm hoping to start doing it at least four times a week right now i'm currently doing it three to four times a week but every time i'm editing youtube i'll put the tennis ball under my foot and start foam rolling it out which does help most of the time but sometimes my tendon does get flared up and i was just kind of ready and recover it as i need to start icing it more because icing does really help it just as heat and compression does so that is the stuff that i have been doing and even that quick little recovery routine that took me 10 minutes to show y'all really did help my foot just moving around feels so much better than what it did in the morning when i wake up as i still wake up every single morning with a lot of stiffness in the heel not necessarily pain just stiffness as that's what plantar fasciitis is i do realize that plantar fasciitis does cause a lot of stiffness but 
specifically when you wake up in the morning and start moving around. So waking up and kind of rolling it out first thing in the morning does help a ton in getting a small little run-in. Activating the foot muscles in the bottom because I think that's what I've literally been lacking. But question of the day is, have you had any tendinopathy or tendinitis or any type of tendon issues and how long did it take you to recover? I know in the sport of running that can happen a lot, especially micro tears or even a complete rupture. That's awful. I think Galen Rupp did end up having that, a complete rupture of the Achilles tendon and it takes a long time to recover. It does suck and I hope nobody had this, but comment down below if you had any of those tendon issues. But the comment of the day goes to Thomas Lee. He says, hate to see you like this, Matthew, but I'm sure you will heal up soon. I truly do hope I do fully heal up soon to where in the morning I wake up with zero pain, zero discomfort, zero niggles whatsoever, and I can just go out on a run with zero discomfort or a little bit of a tiny feeling of discomfort in the beginning and I just feel free. It's been a tough road for the past 18, 19 weeks or so and it hasn't been easy. I mean, I say in every single vlog, it's been tough not to run and do all the sport that I truly love, but I'm able to bike, which is a good thing, but I'm hoping to soon start running because I found out that is the one thing I am missing in my life and it's not kind of anything, but it's running. Running just gave me a good feeling. It gave me a passion so i hope i don't get too excited and ramp up my miles too fast and i re-inflame the tendon completely to where i can't even walk anymore so i'm hoping to start off slow as for the next three to four maybe even five more weeks i'll do around a 30 to 45 minute run and walk and then hopefully by the end of that i can start running for 30 minutes but who really knows if this tendon will flare up again but i'm hoping with the stuff i am doing right now it will not but also i want to get this question today if you have any more suggestions please leave them down in the comment section below as i am struggling just a tad bit just a little bit but i want to thank y'all for watching stay humble work hard be kind i'll see you on the next one peace